let's set up our recipe page that we made earlier in the course. The first thing we're going to do is rename our container, call it group main, and make it fixed width. Then what we're going to do is drag in our header, just like so, and because we turned our recipe card into a reusable element as well, we can drag that right into our main container, and our page is halfway designed. Now our recipe card got a data source from the repeating group on our index page, but on the recipe page, it's not in a repeating group, so we don't have access to the current cell. Instead, we can set the page itself to have a type of content of recipe. Doing this tells Bubble that any content that comes to this page has to be from a recipe data entry. Now when we click on our recipe card, we can set the data source to the current page recipe, which will be defined with whatever recipe we send through. You'll notice that Bubble's telling us we have an issue, and when we click on this issue, it takes us right to where it is. Now that our recipe page has a type of content, this link no longer works, we need to send data along with it. And the data in this case that we need to send is the parent group's recipe, which is populated from our recipe card group getting the parent group's recipe. Back in the recipe page, we'll draw an image element underneath our recipe card. This image element will have a source for the image from the current page recipe's photo. That way, when the recipe is sent over, the image will be populated from whatever recipe was clicked. Next, we'll make some more room on the page by dragging out the height. And we'll draw a text element underneath the image to hold the ingredients for our recipe. We'll set this text element to get the current page recipe's ingredients field. Finally, we'll draw a text element in between these two to help design the page. We'll then select all these elements and put them into a group. We'll then give this group the card style we made earlier. We'll bring the elements inside in a little bit just to design it a little bit more. And then we'll make some room for a link element that will take us to whoever submitted this recipe's profile. When we find the expression through the current page recipe, we can get the current page recipe's creator's name, which will give us the user who created this recipe, and then link them to that recipe creator's profile. And now Bubble's asking us to send over data. In this case, our profile page wants a user, so we're going to send the current page recipe's creator, which evaluates to a user. Now that we've designed that, we can go back to the index page and hit preview, and when we click on view recipe for one of our recipes, we'll actually be taken to this recipe page and we can see everything that we just set up. What we've just completed building is a reusable page that will serve as a template for every single recipe entry our users submit. In the next lesson, we'll be doing this again when we set up our profile page.